What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have this area of interest that is continuing to organize and develop. We have Nigel over here that is moving very, very fast out to sea over here. And we have the Invest 99L that has been organizing and uh, initiated now as it's continuing to sh uh, show gradual organization and development before it impacts the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic over here. So that's what we have going on. We have a lot to cover for you guys for today. So here's what we have for Hurricane Nigel. We'll briefly go over 85 mile per hour winds moving northeast to 30 miles per hour. It's expected to become extra tropical in the next day or so. So that's pretty much the last we're going to hear about that unless this thing bring serious, serious impacts to the United Kingdom and Iceland going down the road. We'll definitely keep an eye on it for those of you who are watching from Iceland and the British Isles. So, we'll, so yeah, we'll keep, definitely keep an eye on that as time continues to go on. Okay, this is interesting right here. This isn't 99L anymore. They tagged this potential tropical cyclone 16 right here. This has a 60% chance of development in the next 48 hours and a 60% chance of development in the next seven days. Its maximum sustained winds are 35 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure is 1,012 millibars. Its current location is 29.0 degrees north. 75.9 degrees west, and it's moving at 9 miles per hour, uh, north at 9 miles per hour. And here's what we have going on. Here's our first public advisory right here. The reason they des designated potential tropical cyclones is so that way they can issue uh, issue watches, warnings, all that stuff. We have tropical storm and storm uh, warnings and storm surge watches in effect. We have a tr uh, we have tropical storm warnings in effect from the uh, from Wilmington, North Carolina, all the way to the uh, to the Maryland Delaware border and through parts of Chesapeake Bay over here. It's expected to become potentially tropical before making landfall in North Carolina and then moving uh, parallel to the coast and, and impacting Virginia Beach before turning to the east near Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey, potentially bringing a lot of impacts to New England over here. So that's a huge situation we need to cover as time continues to go on. Here's the public advisory once again. Here's what we have. Uh, here, here's what we have going on. It's expect it, in the forecast track. The center is expected to approach the coast of North Carolina within the warning area Friday night and early Saturday. Here's the storm surge we're expecting. We're expecting two to four feet of storm surge from Surf City, North Carolina, which is where Topsail Island is, all the way to uh, uh, all the way to Cintig, uh, uh, Virginia. I I, I apologize for absolutely butchering that name. I apologize for, for the, the, those who are in that area. Chesapeake Bay south to Smith Point, two to four feet. Uh, we have one to three feet from the South St. River to Surf City and one to three feet from uh, uh, from, Chint, uh, from Chintu, uh, Teague, uh, Virginia to uh, uh, Fenwick Island, Delaware. Again, sorry if I'm butchering all of this. And here is our peak surge map right here. From this part, uh, from the Virgi uh, from the Virginia portion of the Delmarva Peninsula through parts of the Chesapeake Bay, all the way down to Surf City, North Carolina, we are expecting two to four feet of storm surge, one to three feet for the rest of the Chesapeake Bay and and the, the coast east shore eastern shore of Maryland, as well as parts of North and South Carolina over here. So that's the situation we are paying attention to as time continues to go on. This is going to be potentially bring a lot of impacts right here. We're going to go ahead and show you the discussion to see how strong this could potentially get. There are forecasting this to get become a tropical cyclone at 60 miles per hour before making landfall in North Carolina. So it definitely could be a pretty big storm, according to the discussion right here. The system is forecast to gradually strengthen during the next 24 hours. After that time, the guidance suggests it is likely to form a smaller inner core with additional strengthening expected until the center reaches the coast. The NHC intensity forecast follows the European and GFS model trends. So that's the situation we have going on with potential tropical cyclone 16. This has become, become a much more organized and much bigger threat over the last day or so. Definitely need to keep an eye on it as as time continues to progress this is the first advisory now we're going to go ahead and show you the main show of what we have this is now has an 80 percent chance of formation in the next seven days this is as of 2 p.m eastern daylight time Here's what it reads. Showers and thunderstorms associated with a broad area of low pressure a couple hundred miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands is beginning to show signs of organization. Environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for gradual development of the system, and a tropical depression is likely to form this weekend or early next week while the system moves generally westward at 10 to 15 miles per hour across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. 40% chance of formation in the next 48 hours. It was at 10... 
when we reported on this yesterday, and we have a 80% chance of formation in the next seven days. Was at 70 earlier? So that's the situation we have going on right here, and this could potentially still be a very large threat to the Lesser Antilles, and if it continues to move west there and enter the Caribbean, it definitely could tap into the insanely warm waters, insane ocean heat content, and so on and so forth. So that's what we have going on across the tropics right now. We have a new th emerging threat that could make a lot of impacts to North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, all the way to New England. So we'll keep an eye on it as time continues to go on, and we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel on that. So that's what we have going on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some options operational model runs. This is what we have for the European. We're going to show you both uh, potential tropical cyclone 16 and this area of interest that I expect to be designated invest 90 L in the next little bit. So that's what we have going on. The European has this thing gradually organizing and developing as a tropical cyclone. Gets down to a 994 millibar system as it's approaching North Carolina. Makes landfall near the Outer Banks and then starts traversing more, uh, further and further to the north. Crosses through Virginia, Virginia Beach is especially. Uh, then it starts to bring a lot of impacts to the Chesapeake Bay, Delaware, Maryland, all the way to New England as this thing is quite expansive and brings potentially a big flooding threat. The two main concerns I have for North Carolina are mainly wind and flooding because this thing is expected to move at a rather slow pace and could bring multiple inches of rain at, while it's over there. And then in New England, the main threat I have is flooding uh, primarily because of all the rain that this thing is going to bring. But meanwhile, this thing is gradually organizing and developing. We have a high pressure ridge that's built up right here, which is going to propel this further and further to the west. And then... According to the European right here, it has it weakening a little bit and then turning out to sea right here, which I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not exactly the biggest fan of how sudden this thing turns uh, away from the Leeward Islands right here because this is still a rather weakening storm. Keep in mind, this thing does start to quickly strengthen as this continues to move to the north. So I'm not 100% sure what to make of that at this current time. And that is just the 0Z of the European. The 12Z is coming out right now. The 12Z is showing a similar situation right here. We've been seeing a decent shift towards the east over the last day or so, according to the European and the GFS. We'll go ahead and show you the 0Z of the GFS to give you a better understanding. 0Z GFS has a 990 millibar system hitting the outer banks of North Carolina into Virginia right here. And then it has this thing starting to organize and develop. And then it starts to intensify as it's approaching the Antilles, makes landfall on the Leeward Islands, makes a close pass to Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic before turning out to sea and then potentially bringing some impacts to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland right there. So well, what I'm seeing with this right here is... The quicker it takes to organize and the quicker it takes to intensify, the more likely this thing's going to be pushed out to sea because there is a bit of a trough that's starting to build up right here due to this low pressure system that might end up guiding this thing further and further to uh, further out to sea. So it's going to really depend on two factors from what I am looking at. The first factor is going to be this high pressure ridge that that's built up for several days. It's going to be quite strong. And if we go ahead and show you the 500 millibar height anomalies right here, it's a quite strong ridge uh, going into this, uh, counter, uh, in, including an even stronger ridge in the Hudson Bay of Canada. But there is a bit of a trough that's going to start to, uh, to develop right here. It's off the coast of Virginia and North Carolina right there, which could end up pushing this thing out as and as the ridge starts to rebuild. It ultimately uh, starts doing that. And then we have this trough, massive trough that really builds up and really attracts this thing to that area right there. So we'll have to pay attention to that. That's the 0Z uh, 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 height anomalies right there. The 6Z height anomalies, interestingly, if we go ahead and p take a comparison to the 0Z, it's not that much of a difference right there, although it, the 6Z it does have this weakening a little bit faster than anticipated, and it has it push, uh, moving a little bit further to the north of the Antilles. There is still a very strong ridge over here, but there is a trough right here that we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. And then this trough starts to come off the uh, coast and this thing starts to migrate towards that. Uh, ridge starts, according to the GFS, building back up, which could slow its movement. So that's what we have, interestingly enough, for the GFS. Next one we're showing you is the 12Z right here. And the 12Z ridge 
is star starts to build up similar to the 0 and 6C right here. However, the ridge is according to the GFS, expected to weaken a lot faster than anticipated. And we have a huge trough with the remnants of Nigel right here that builds up and starts to attract this right here. So that's what we have going on. It's really going to depend on how quickly this thing organizes and develops. And it's going to, de and it's going to also depend on the strength of that ridge right there. The stronger the ridge, the further south this will get pushed, and the f closer to the Antilles this will get pushed, which is pretty interesting. A lot of the models are still kind of up and down, up and down about that, but there has been a little bit of a shift towards the east. We'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. It's a another one of those situations where it's really tough to forecast after five days out. In fact, here's where we're at about five days out. Things start to ramp up. The GFS has the thing starting to organize and intensify at a, uh, about five days out. So it's really going to come down to how strong this ridge is and how quickly this organizes. So now we're going to go ahead and show you some conditions of what will happen. Here's what we have with the global sea temperatures across the main development region. If it, end, if it ends up moving due west and into this huge area of 30 plus degrees Celsius waters and approaches the Antilles, it's going to have no problem organizing or developing uh, no matter what at this point. Now, I will say this, like, I will say this, if this thing is still an invest, by the time it gets to about, uh, to about the halfway point of the main development region, I will say the chances of this thing ending up hitting the Antilles do increase by quite a bit. Something we need to keep an eye on, but we're not 100% sure yet. So that's the track, of, uh, that's the global sea temperatures. We have huge area of 30 plus degrees Celsius, ocean heat content, Absolutely massive across a lot of the Antilles, across the Caribbean Sea, across everywhere. If this thing ends up making landfall near Guadalupe and then ends up uh, entering the Caribbean, it'll have a ton of energy to work with. Uh, even if it uh, even if it just moves to, uh, moves a little bit in the Caribbean, it'll intensify by a very fast pace. There's a lot of OHC. There's still quite a lot of ocean heat content uh, in the western half of the main development region that we'll have to pay attention to. And this area right here could be an area where this thing starts to rapidly intensify, similar to how Lee did in two, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So that's what we have for the ocean heat content. Wind shear across this uh, across this part, it, the wind shear is weakening as we speak. Each uh, each frame we are getting are showing weaker and weaker shear across parts of the western MDR. So that's what we have going uh, going on throughout this whole area. And the weaker this gets, the quicker this thing can organize, the quicker this thing can intensify. So this is going to be a very, very, very serious situation we need to pay attention to. That, as well as potential Tropical Cyclone 16. We'll keep you updated on all these threats here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.